want to ask you a question, Scott. I want to answer it, I think. Well, first of all, we have to do the intro for the show. Yeah. Which is not so much a show as much as it is a really interesting conversation. Mm -hmm. And in this case, between friends and neighbors, old friends and sure. neighbors. Yeah. So the idea here is that we ask a musician or some sort of artist to peruse the mega, mega, mega website and look at the paintings and sculptures and pictures. And then if they see something that inspires them and makes them want to write a song, to have them write a song and, and then look, we'll talk about it. You kind of mm -hmm. did it completely different pacing coming in the side door, which is fantastic. You actually wrote the song before you even really talked to Pete about the painting, right? No. What? Not really. Isn't your song done? No. That's just me with GarageBand. <laughs> that's okay. So that's that's like a that was just the beginning. That was me Tuesday night. Okay. How much do you want to get me to go into it now? All of it. Okay. Okay. So. Um, <laughs> Well, Pete came to me with the idea. I, I kind of like, I, I tend to overthink things. So I knew if I sat there staring at the art gallery for a day that I, I would be, I would torture myself with it. It wouldn't, I would never get anything done. So I just, the first thing that jumped out to me was the one that I picked. And I've been doing all this um, weird electronic music, which I've got on Bandcamp as this INT thing. And um, I'm not really pushing it. It's just something I do um, because uh i kind of got the punk rock side and then i've got the sort of the ambient side of the things that i like sort of the main things that i like or feel capable of generating and so i thought maybe the ambient thing would make more sense for this because i was going to do it by myself and then um so then i started writing a thing and then i i, I sat on it for a week and then because the, my process is i, I i'll kind of do a, an idea dump and then i'll let it sit for a few days so that I can objectively go back to it because if I go back to it fresh like four or five days later I can pretty much know okay this is worth a, tra a trail worth running on or I need to throw it out and the trails just didn't just kept ending up not being worth running on and I and I think what was happening was I was over thinking it I was like I was like, like Pete means a lot to me. His art means a lot to him. So if I created pressure in the back of my head, like I've got to do this, it's got to be this certain thing. And like, so then Tuesday night, um, my regular band practice was canceled for some reason. And, and I was like, well, I'm just going to go to this space and just make something. So what you ended up with was me alone at our practice space for an hour and a half. And that, that felt more natural. I didn't overthink it. I just started riffing and then I started building on it while looking at a picture. So. All right. So like perfect place. Tell me about the picture of all the ones you scrolled. Why did you stop on that one? Um, well, I like um, big, broad strokes like that. I mean, I think that's like what I do creatively too. I think it reminded me of some things that I like, like, um, Dan Higgs kind of stuff, kind of like, kind of endearing and kind of twisted at the same time is like my jam. So like it jumped out at me as that, and that might not have been the intention when it was made, but that's what it did to me. Um, I'm definitely like consumed right now with the ideas of, with ideas about power and about um, authority and um, our relationship with that as, as peasants, you know, um, and there was a definite like royalty theme to it. And um, I don't know, I don't, I don't know, like, I guess that's kind of is that, but as far as like, why I felt like it was, I, it seemed like, okay, I can do this because my brain's already there. My brain's already kind of on that track of how, of our complicated relationship with power, so. And what was the, what was the painting of? What were those broad strokes of? Like if you had to describe, if you described it, how do you describe what's happening in the painting? Well, <laughs> um, I saw, let me get it, let me get it on my phone too so I can speak more intelligently of this. Um, I, I mean, I felt sadness from it. I, it's funny cause like the, um, 
what we just went through politics wise made me so sad and it wasn't like um and i'm not speaking like about policies or anything like that i'm just saying like the whole thing was just like sad it just felt sad for everybody and i, was, I remember talking to gina and being like this even seems kind of sad for the people that I'm, I'm not on the same team with like this just seems like yeah I, well like i struggle with like constant existential anxiety right so I, I struggle all the time with like um what am i responsible for my anxiety about like am i going to be able to do all the things that are expected of me and then like how's it all going to fall apart and when's everybody going to realize that i'm full of shit and i'm not i'm not able to do any of the things that they expect me to do you know like kind of that constant like like that imposter syndrome thing that that people struggle with and i was this picture made me think in the terms of like wow like what if I actually was in power over things? Like, what if I actually, like, what's that like? Like, what happens when you're um, actually responsible for like everything <laughs> and nobody really knows how to do it, right? So like, that's hard and sad kind of, there's a sadness, even if the person in power is evil to me, like, it's like the weight of the, chaos and pressure that's on you and the impossibility of what's put before you that's what the painting kind of said to me wow that's like some extreme empathy you know i do have that to a yeah. fault <laughs> yeah yeah and so, that's that's my that's my 80s that's my 80s moral panic upbringing um i do often um i think to my sometimes not not to my benefit um am able to put myself in the shoes of of people who who aren't good people and and can feel like wow that's i hate you and i feel so bad for you right now like I, that's definitely something that i feel uh <laughs> i don't relate to like when the whole thing is like i hope that person dies or i hope like everything bad comes to them it's like uh, I don't know. I am not really comfortable with that. Like, I, I mean, yeah, yeah. I love it. I'm riding that wave. Well, then also, um, if you want to get real personal and kind of back to my dad stuff, something that I've been dealing with in therapy <laughs> is 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 is, is the is the concept of um because I struggle a lot with the people that are close to me uh family wise just not having no concept of me or my life or my interest they haven't understood me since I was seven years old you know like it's been and that is something that has caused me all of the spectrum of of feelings of feeling alone or feeling afraid or feeling guilty or feeling angry and you know all the way from the you know anyway my therapist kind of had this great concept that I think might be helpful to other people too which is are you more upset that your dad doesn't get you or are you more upset that he cannot like it's not it, he's not maliciously not getting you he just hasn't reached the same sort of tier of consciousness that you have he doesn't have as big of an open mind as you do he doesn't see everything the way that you see it and she was like and in a lot of ways that's just like kind of sad it's not really like something to be mad at him about it's something to kind of feel sorry for him about you know and like that was big that was a big revelation to me to be able to hold anger as pity sometimes not 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 it doesn't like change the way i communicate with him it's just how i hold it like you know what i mean does that make sense like oh yeah it's feeling a feeling a little bit sorry for someone is definitely a less toxic emotion than being angry at them you know for me so it reminds me of that line from the saint francis prayer about it being better to understand than be understood you know it's like i yeah. have a better chance of trying to understand you than i'll ever have control over you trying to understand me and uh yeah, yeah like you can kind of be at peace with that yeah so I'm guessing, Scott, do you wrestle with your songs the way, you know, you wrestle with kind of the other big things in your mind and in your head? Absolutely. Like, 
I mean, I guess most of the 99% of the time, I'm more of like a band guy. I'm a rock band guy or a punk band guy yeah. or whatever. So I have, I think what's scary for me is when I'm alone with it. Cause I don't know when the art stops. I don't know when, like, when am I done? When is this like a done thing? When is, and also like, is this good enough to keep going? Like I said, you know, the trail analogy earlier, it's, it's, a, it is a struggle of like, I don't know what's good and what isn't. So my approach Mm -hmm. and the main thing that I do which is my bands um is I, there's usually a per like in totally slow I have this guy Chuck and he's like a perfectionist and he has a very fixed ideas about what's good and what's bad and he doesn't have the same sort of constant turmoil mm -hmm. but I'm the ideas guy I have so many ideas I have a million riffs a day and and like I've gotten fairly competent at just sitting down in front of my computer real quick and doing like two guitar parts and a bass part and just throwing some computer drums on it, which is basically the song that you ended up with. But, yeah. um, and so I've got like a Dropbox folder that has an ongoing like 25, 30, 35, down to seven, whatever ideas that I'm just dumping in there. It's called song chunks. And it's just like, I just throw everything in there and Chuck has access to that folder and other you know Andy has to access to that folder and like uh whenever they get around to it they start listening and they'll be like ooh idea number three is pretty killer and so we just focus on that one so when it's a group effort it's less it's less anxious for me because I I need help curating myself um and is that Dropbox or Google Drive or what are you using that's that? a Dropbox that's a Dropbox yeah okay so you so the folder is live and basically at any time anybody can go in there and listen to something and mm -hmm. collaborate. Mm -hmm. So is that primarily how you're working together because of the pandemic, or is that what you've what you were previously no, doing? That's always how it's been for me. I mean, really? ever since the technology's been available. Yeah. I'm not like a jam guy. I'm not like a let's get together and jam. Like I'm not. I don't really see myself as a musician. I guess I probably am one, but like I see myself as just like, how do I put this? Uh, I don't, like really, you're, you're I don't really know what I'm doing, Molly. <laughs> I know how but, to like put some chords together. But it's and, interesting though because it's still very highly composed, which is like, because but I have to say, like having heard your music, I always thought that maybe it was a very organic process and very yeah. rock very very punk but what i hear you saying is that you've taken you've taken a very um specific approach to being wild by yeah like, well i don't have time wild, huh? i don't have time you know i'm a yeah. grown-up person i can't like get four people in a room and get drunk and play for eight hours and tape it and then be like oh there was an idea and i don't have time for that <laughs> and <I'm> like <laughs> and i don't drink anymore and I, other people don't have time for that. I just can't do that anymore. I mean, like, I, you know, when I was 17, that's what we would do. We would just go, like, play some terrible three-chord progression for, like, hours until it was, like, something clicked. But this yeah. is, like, much more efficient. I can get a lot, done, you know, I have a lot of ideas. And if I don't get them down when I have them, I will lose them. I'm not going to remember them, you so know, so. Are you putting down ideas? How often do you put down ideas? Oh, um, well, a lot of times the first thing that I actually do is hum it into my phone. Like I'll hum, I have some very, very deeply embarrassing hums in my phone because I will use GarageBand on my phone to do like a four track of me humming like a rhythm line and like octave chords over that and then like maybe a bass idea and then maybe an idea for like a vocal pattern just so I can hang on to it for dear life. So please, maybe once please, a please put out an album of home. No, no. So then maybe once a week, <laughs> I, I, I try to actually like sit down with a guitar and I will play those things back to myself and I will play them into the computer with like a metronome. And those will turn into like, sometimes I get lucky and it's like a whole song. And then sometimes it's just piece, 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 you know, so just a lot of little pieces 20 second pieces yeah so it's a, it's a matter of uh i mean it's really a more it's, it's just a practically efficient way for me to do this as a you know 48 year old man writing the same kind of songs i was writing when i was 18 you know 
So awesome tools though. You just dropped a couple great tools. Yeah. But, so um so the when when you have and specifically the idea that came from this painting, did it come mm -hmm. in a different way or did it come the way they always do, or was it just like do you kind of walk around and mill around until you get an idea and then sit down and record it? Like, tell me about the specific process. Well, it, it was different because most, I mean, I always see like creativity to me is like almost more about um, curation than it is about um, just having an idea. Like, at least for me, I know most of my favorite songs, I could have thought of them. Like, it's not like they're they're not that magical. I mean, they are in what they ended up doing for me or being for whoever listens to them. But like, there's only so many notes, right? And there's only so many ways those notes can go together. And I'm not like a big lyrics person. So it's really all about the, the instrumentation or the guitar parts. So usually it's just, I'm just picking it up from the Wi-Fi of the universe or whatever. I'm not like, I'm not sitting down and be like, I'm going to write a song now like that will not work that that's a recipe for me to have no idea like it's usually I mean a lot of times it's when I'm about to fall asleep so I do a lot of getting up and running out of bed to hum into the phone in the bathroom so this was more deliberate than that and um I would say like I did like I did con I did refer to my song chunks folder <laughs> and be like okay let's let me kind of dig through some of the slower pieces in there. And then I found a couple of things that felt at the right level of melancholy. And then I just started, and then I just recorded myself and then I looped it and then I just started playing over it until, until what you heard happened. So, so yeah, it was different because I had like a deadline of sorts, not a tight one, but like I had to get something done, you know, and Usually I'm not on any kind of deadline. It's, you know, I'm just putting down ideas, so. Well, so Pete, tell us about this painting and what, yeah, just tell us about it. where did the idea come from for you? Also very uh, political. This is all painted during, we'll just call it the highly political times. Um, I was messing with a lot of crowns and you know what does that mean that someone is in charge someone's the king some you know why why do they have the power and what is, what is that like and how the hell did they get the power and what are they doing with it and uh when scott was saying you know what if you were in charge of everything part of what i was playing with was that even these people that we look up at as they're uh, the kings or whatever, they're still just these humans, you know, these incredibly flawed human beings. And so that in part was what the painting was, was painting, uh, there's actually two of them that have the same title. And I'm not 100% sure which one <laughs> you picked, but they're very similar to each other. Um, but the idea was to paint these kind of flawed creatures. One, his hand is just kind of barely attached in like a very, uh, uh, in a, like a toy kind of way. The other one has a wing attached to his back, you know, proving that he's angelic and we should trust him. Uh, but they're both definitely fumbling for um, these things that are kind of floating in the air. So well, it sounds like we weren't really on the same page at all with this beat. <laughs> all right, that's a wrap. <laughs> I just didn't see that at all. So, <laughs> but uh, um, that whole idea of just the the flawed human that, like, what you were saying, we should feel yeah. sorry for him, but uh, we should just feel sorry for all. Yes. <laughs> yeah. So Scott, just to pause there, you didn't know that Pete had, had was coming from a similar. Political... We didn't talk about it at all. Not yeah. at all. That's awesome. So apparently it was, he, he, communi he communicated successfully um, in regards to what I saw. Well, so back to that, like Pete, for you, because there was a lot of news that's been happening. I mean, at what specific place was it? You know, what time was it? And then 
you know, then what do you do? Like, do you try to start to put that on just in color or do you have a, what do you call it? A song dump or a? Uh, I totally do. I've got a folder on my desktop that I just dump images into. Yeah. Um, just recently, I went through 1980s prom photography and just started screenshotting them and throwing them in this folder. And that's gonna be the next series of paintings will be based off of those images. But uh, yeah, I'll get on a kick of a certain type of images. At one point it was whatever picture was on the front page of the paper. So it'd be totally uncurated, whatever the newspaper deemed was important for the day. That's the image I was gonna take. So all those images do go into a folder on my desktop and uh, I'll go back in there and look at them and be like, oh, that could totally relate to what I'm working on now. It's a very similar way of working. But also uh, something I did talk to Scott about that um, I'll work on a painting and I think this has come up in other discussions too. I'll work on a painting and be totally stoked on it. I think it's the greatest thing in the world that I've ever painted. Everything's right. Step away from it, come back the next day. And it's just, just wasted so much time, wasted so much paint and just gesso over the whole thing and start over, throw the whole idea away. And I think Scott, correct me if I'm wrong, but when you were doing this, like you went the ambient road, you went down a few different paths, like you were saying. Yeah. And then it's just a matter of kind of slash and burn. Yeah. Well, I think I had to sort of, like I said, I, I really rely on that, that process of other people helping me edit myself when I'm doing a collaborative music thing, which a band is. But when I'm doing something by myself, I don't have anybody doing that. So I've kind of got a halfway, at least see ideas all the way through and then be like, oh, this isn't working, you know? Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, for sure. A lot of, I mean, I, I, I might write a hundred songs, but I put out a 30 minute LP every two years. You know, it's not like I'm throwing out way more than I'm keeping, you know? But I also might go back to that stuff. You know, I might I might use an idea on my next album that was from the folder five years ago. So. But are all those throwaways necessary then to get to the thing? Yes. Right? Absolutely, yeah. Yeah, I mean, uh, I can't imagine a scenario where I'm plucking 10 great songs out of thin air and I uh, haven't had to journey to them like they're just there and ready that's just not how this works for me and not for you it sounds like i'm probably not for anyone i mean i um yeah it's, it's all about and, and again like an idea might be a great idea in two years in a different context or with a different um you know what I mean? Everything's got a context to it. So it's all about finding what's the right idea for me right now. Um, Cause I'm not saying even all those ideas that I, that I end up not using right now are bad. Like I, I might use them later. I will use them later. I know I will. Yeah. So um, where, where do a lot of your ideas come from, Scott? If not a painting? Um. Well, I mean, honestly, I, a lot of it, I, probably most of the time, I don't really know. I mean, it's, um, I guess the math of music is kind of just always, that gear is always engaged a little bit. And I mean, honestly, sometimes I might hear a two seconds in a commercial or something. And then like those two notes keep kind of ping ponging. And 30 minutes later, I'm like, where are those notes coming from? And then I'll go, go put it down. You know, it's like, I, I mean, I don't really know probably a lot of it i mean with pop music or rock music it's all derivative it's all borrowing from it each itself all the time it's the snake eating its tail kind of all the time so i'm sure a lot of the time it's just from something i was listening to earlier that day translated twisted around and you know what i mean i mean you write songs 
What about you? No, but I mean, I generally I'm like in some sort of pain. <laughs> you know, uh -huh. like I don't like walk around like a, you know, I what I hear you almost describing is like a, um, I kept picturing like a Wi-Fi modem, you know, and how yeah, it I is almost it. like I'm just ESPing it out of the air or something. Oh. Yeah. Minor but also I'm not but, but yours are you words first are you words kind of the core of it or is it a melody um it's a conscious decision to take a bad story and make it into something beautiful yeah because for me the words are so that's like the fourth most important part it's so see I'm, I'm like oh, the words <laughs> are the fourth most important yeah. part no I know and oh yeah it's all yeah. about the all about the hook about that hook like it's yeah. all about words for me for sure no no the song yeah. has to, to me i think i almost have this sort of unconscious rule of like the song has to stand on its own first right. then you put words on it and it's gravy you know and i've gotten away from that because i think i think some of my songwriting has gotten a little more a little simpler than it used to be um like in the 90s but the words are very secondary to me and I'm definitely, um, but those come the same way. It's, yeah. and it might be a story or it might be some political idea or it might be some angry thing. But a lot of the times, man, it's just like, I hear four or five words that just kind of sound cool banging up against each other. And then I just extrapolate from that. So it's almost like the words are notes, you know? Yeah, um, yeah. lyrics that you, like I'm reading over the lyrics for the song you sent over. Um, I mean, to me, that's not secondary. Like, I'm not going to call you the greatest poet of the of of the day, but it is poetic. It's absolutely. You're poetic. not. Second best. Second best. <laughs> These qualifiers are very hurtful, Pete. <laughs> Have you called anyone else that's written lyrics for this podcast the greatest <laughs> poet of all time? <laughs> well, I mean, that episode is forthcoming. Yes. Um, no, well, but yeah, I had like I all, mean, I made them make aside, yeah. all kidding aside. These lyrics are damn good and damn powerful, and I I find that hard to believe that they're uh, second on the fourth. On the fourth. <laughs> Well, in this case, I did know like, okay, I'm writing about this piece of art and I had a very solid like theme. I wanted a melancholy music. I wanted layers of guitars and I had like, I knew what I was communicating as far as anxiety, power, um, empathy for misery, you know, that kind of thing. So, yeah, I mean, I would say in this situation, they were, uh, they were maybe secondary instead of quaternary or whatever fourth is sweet you just made up a word yeah um so pete like do you also share that though as a painter in terms of um when you get stuff what do you do because a musician can always like turn to the other players and maybe help them you know they'll help them usher it through a little bit but as a painter what happens when you get to that point uh well so i had one painting of it, was, it started out as a as a challenge i wanted to work from a photograph and it was also the biggest canvas i had ever worked on and uh i had an image of joe oddly a musician joe talbot from idols they did a tiny desk concert and i just freeze framed one image he's incredibly energetic kind of guy <clears throat> and painted that and was very happy with it. And then, like I said, came in the next day and day by day, it just felt more of uh, kind of pointless. And yeah, not having someone to bounce that off of, it sat there for probably four to six weeks until, uh, yeah, I guess it's, it's, I tried to save it a few different ways um but that didn't happen so then it's just a hard reset really well speaking in terms too of music versus visual and non-collaborative versus doing it yourself how do you know when you're when it when the project is working how do you know when you're done 
I don't. That's one of the biggest. Uh, I don't know if you ever are, or if you, if my brain <laughs> just gets exhausted of the idea. Yeah. Or if yeah. I, that one that was definitely set out, like, I want to see if I can paint from a photo and uh, did that. And that did lead to now I'm working on one of these prom paintings uh, and I'm taking what I learned from that painting and applying it here. Um, so I don't know if there is a done. It's kind of like what you were saying, all those songs that don't get used, they're still songs and they're still have their purpose. Uh, but yeah, do, when do you put a stamp on it? And yeah, it? but know. a song, you know, a song, like we know a song's probably not 20 minutes long. We know a song's got, you know, I mean, you don't, there, there's, there's a form, there's a rule structure that's not, you don't have to follow the rules very specifically, but they give you some good meter of like, okay, the song is over. And I just feel like with visual, that's, that's hard because how, how long can a painting be? <laughs> yeah. In terms of time, you know. Um, well, I mean, Pete, you knew when this one was done. How did you know this particular one was done that um, Scott wrote about? Uh, writing? Yeah, I mean, they definitely, I've got them sitting next to me because I wanted to reference them. They definitely, there was something I wanted to achieve in them. And it did, uh, I got to that point, but there were so many points in between as simple as like the whole background at one point was all pink and then the whole background was all yellow and I was like you know what it doesn't need to be a color at all it just needs to all be white so there's I guess then I'd, I could check that off of the list backgrounds done you know then the color of the character uh that sort of thing one of his hands is white one is blue but there's black it's got kind of filth on it um check that off that's got the right feel to it so I guess it's, if I can look at each element in the painting and I've taken that far enough. Mm -hmm. I guess it's like the guitar solo is done. Boom. Yeah. Uh, you know? Yeah, I mean, I do, you know, I do a little visual art myself, but I, I'm, I mean, mainly in terms of like promoting music that I'm doing, but, you know, flyers is, is an art form for sure and posters and album covers and things like that and I've, I'm terrible at knowing when to stop you know at like when have I made this too much and getting too like granular and um like I wanted this really like for our album that's coming out in June I wanted like a really simple but striking like collage and I I do some collage work and I was kind of looking at what I did I was like none of this simple I mean I ended up having someone else do it because I was just like I'll never stop I'll just keep taping things on until this just doesn't look like anything, you know. Um, That's a good thing to recognize, though. It's like, yeah, no, I'm not the person to be doing this right now. Yeah, well, and that's hard is, to let go of. Well, that's I got, go I got, I got this guy Ron um, Liberte to do it, and he's sort of like a known quantity as like a punk collage artist. Like people know his work, and he's on a lot of album covers. And the first. My first thought, first opening the email where he's like, I've got it. And he sends it to me as I'm like, this is too simple. Like my first thought is like, this needs more shit on it. You know, like I'm trying to, like I'm already destroying his art with my crappy process. You know, I mean, I recognize very quickly, like, oh, this is why I had you do it. It's because I won't stop. I even am trying to put stuff on yours, you know. You know, I'm. Sorry, I had to put my dog started barking and I had to put you on mute, but I was laughing. It's true. Especially when you said, and I had to bring my process to your art. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and throw more shit on it. Yeah. Yeah. But I mean, man, you sound super self aware about what you do, though. And like, and if it's good for you or not. Like, yeah. You know? I think that I'm a highly flawed person and that self-awareness is not the thing I'm lacking in. That is the thing that I'm, I'm like acutely self-aware. Okay. Yeah. Very self-aware of how <laughs> self-aware you are. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, Scott, you were talking about pulling uh, 
creativity kind of out of the ether. And that's something we've heard in a few of these other discussions that we've had. Uh, I think David Childers mentioned it and even Church Going Mule mentioned it. Um, why, why can you do that? And some people can't. And why can you only do it sometimes? I really, like, I want someone to define for me where the hell creativity comes from because everyone yeah. keep mentioning kind of this jet stream that's oh, i got it i got your answer <laughs> <laughs> so I, I uh i i mean i think there's a lot of areas here i mean first of all um i don't think that i'm capable of it and someone else isn't i think that i'm listening for it and i'm recording it i mean i think everybody's got I mean, unless you have really cleared your, I don't know, I can't relate to someone who doesn't have a million ideas flying in and out of their ears all day. It's just like how I am. Um, so maybe, yeah, you're right. Most people aren't like that. Um, You've tuned in to something that. Yeah, yeah. I'm obsessed with it, which, you know, um, people ask me, um, you know you've got like a fairly busy music thing and you've got like a business and you've got a family and you've got all this stuff like how do you do all of it and i'm like well you know like how your car is registered on time and like, <laughs> like <laughs> there's so many things that i don't do right like i'm so busy like laser focusing in on things like this i'm getting up in the middle of the night to frantically hum you know crappy punk rock songs into my phone so i don't lose them in the middle of the night like I'm losing sleep over this stuff you know like it's I mean it's a passion though you're I mean that's uh, yeah you're right totally passionate about it well yeah I mean and, and, and at, at the end of the day like I think um with any of this stuff but per, I mean I think particularly if you're writing sort of um obtuse difficult music that isn't gonna ever be popular with a giant amount of people like you have to love the whole process the whole process is the thing you know like um we're talking about like the end game or the end of the piece of art like there's no end to this like i'm never gonna stop having chord ideas come into my head like that's um you know so this record comes out in june and that's great but that's not like okay i'm done like there's that's just getting that's just part of the process right so like um you have to be you have to have a compulsion for it i think to get it done unless you're more of a genius than we are which plenty of people are especially in my case as the second best poet <laughs> that pete's ever seen uh, uh, I don't, you know, I don't, I mean, it's a matter of priorities and compulsion and, and passion for a thing, you know, I mean, at some point, well, all, three of, all, all three of us were exposed to something that made us go like that. I got to do that. I got to find that. I got to recapture that and we're chasing it and we're going to always chase it, you know, but you're able to tap into something and then there's like a flow that happens. Uh, I mean, it, I'll go in the studio and I will start painting and a couple of hours will go by and it's like my brain i haven't made a i haven't purposely made any decisions like it's just been you're just suddenly in this flow yeah and it's like god what the hell was that and how do i mm -hmm. answer that again yeah, like, yeah what the hell was it you know yeah yeah if you could bottle it it'd be pretty cool yeah but you can't you have to do the work to get to it and you don't even know you're doing it when you're doing it you only notice it afterwards kind of you know so what were you gonna say molly no I just it's a payoff and i'm kind of like there is some exchange it's like yeah you're sitting down and you're giving the thing the time and attention to write record it but you um i'm kind of wondering for you like what is it that you receive from it so like you're taking it down but is it a is it a joy? Is it purpose? Is it is it harmony? Is it collaboration? Like, what do you get from that conversation? Hmm. Um, from the exchange, from the exchange of inspiration, from you putting yeah. it down. You know what I mean? Because you're sending something back. Yeah. 
Man, um, that's a deep one. That you know, the, honestly, and this this isn't going to sound very inspirational, but kind of the first thought I had is it's almost like um, crying or sneezing or something. It's like, um, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? Like I, it's uh, it's in there. I'm getting it out. I'm getting it out. You know, I'm chasing the idea down and I'm tackling it in a field and I'm punching it into submission and then I'm done <laughs> and then it's like done. You know. Like playing shows even more is like that. I mean, after a show, I feel crazy drained. I feel so emotionally drained. Like, is it like peaceful? I have, oh, is it peaceful or is it? Uh uh. No. Really? No. I wouldn't. I mean, I don't want to say it's good or bad. It's kind of like you know, is crying good or bad? Like it just is. It's just like yeah. a thing you have to do. You know. Yeah um yeah it feels like that to me it feels like crucial it feels like um it's just a thing that my body does and my brain does and I have to do it that's awesome it sounds self-important but that's not what I, that's not what I intend like I don't, I don't think know, I don't I don't think what I'm doing is important to anybody else I don't ever assume that I, I just know I have to do it no, it's yeah. like therapizing though. Like it's a, it's a treatment in some ways. Yeah. But what about you, Pete? Like, do you, what do you get from it? From the exchange uh, idea? I will quite often find myself just laughing as I'm painting <laughs> um, at the absurdities of what I've put <laughs> on canvas. Uh, so I do get joy out of it. I do get a sense of accomplishment, I guess. Um, was that what? Yeah. Um, I don't know. I, there's, as Scott was just talking, I was thinking about the, uh, it's just flashed in my, <laughs> in my head of like, we've been making music since we, uh, you know, cavemen were sitting around the fire you know, they were pounding out rhythms. And at the same time, there's probably someone off in the cave, like tracing the outline of their hand. So it's like this, uh, we've been doing these things forever, you know, mm -hmm. and um, we're still doing them and we're probably gonna keep doing them. And, but I don't know why, I still don't know exactly oh. why. Well, I don't want to say it's, I don't want to say either that like I don't ever get any joy from it. I didn't mean to imply that or that um, it never feels meditative or joyful or any of that. Like I do get those things. It's just um, like you said, we've been doing it forever. And I really think um, uh, not to get overly metaphysical, but I just think that the math of all of this is it's out there. It's the Wi-Fi has always been there. The, the numbers and the rhythms and tonalities. And I mean, it's just like the universe does that. There's a rhythm to everything. And like, I think some people just are moved. I mean, everybody's moved by it. Everybody likes music. People like art and movies. Like that's not weird to like those things and consume them, but being compelled to do them is, um, some of us just are picking up on it, I guess, or. Mm. Yeah. yeah, I don't know. I mean, I feel like, is this true though? And Scott, I know you live in a house full of art and I know you do too, Pete. And I guess, I guess I have friends that do as well, but it does seem like we're, we are, there's a hunger for, for painting in, in a way that there hasn't really been before. Am I kind of, is that, are you noticing that as well? Like this desire for, to see paintings on the walls, like an original, and like not the shit that you get at Target and World Market, but like the real stuff. I've seen it for sure with uh, mega, mega, mega. I mean, we started an online art gallery in the middle of a pandemic and uh, people- Why do you think that's happening? Why do you, you know what beautiful. I mean? It's beauty. Yeah. Uh, it goes back to one of our most basic human abilities, I think, to create, you know? And to want to see them, to be surrounded by them. Yeah. 
Um, especially I think it's too, it's just a culture, it's a generational thing too and a cultural thing. I mean, I, um, I, you know, I grew up with, um, in the beige suburbs with beige walls and like, you know, a, maybe a giant wooden fork hanging on the kitchen wall. <laughs> um, you know, like there wasn't, nobody gave any thought to that stuff. But now that you say that, I'm thinking about it. And like, even my parents have more now than they used to. I mean, it's definitely more like original art of some kind is on their wall now than definitely than when I lived with them. Um, you know, because that is something that we've been learning, Scott, like in a lot of these conversations is that artists pick up on frequencies of each other. And mm -hmm. particularly in the pairings, like it's spot on that you, you know, kind of were picking up the same feeling that Pete was feeling when he painted it. You know what mm -hmm. I mean? Mm -hmm. And it's just kind of fun to think about all these people that are now picking up these frequencies you want to see or feel or look at original art. And I wonder if, if songs will follow for people too. It's like, is there something in the air? Mm -hmm. people want to do more of it because you yeah. sound prolific as hell number one you sound extremely prolific are you always this prolific i don't know but i, I will say and i know this is the purpose of me being here is not to like promote my album but but the process of doing this album which we did throughout pretty much started writing and recording it when the pandemic started so it's a definitely like of the moment kind of thing. And um, just like the response in terms of us finding people to help us put it out, finding people to help us do the art, finding people to help us with PR, that process has been so much easier than it's ever been. I mean, I've never, it's, I'm, everybody is saying, everybody's saying yes to everything. It's like, yeah, I've, I mean, I've just been thinking like, why is everybody saying yes? <laughs> like, I, you know, usually, I, like, usually I have to send my album out to like 30 labels and then one of them says, we'll kind of help halfway or something, you know, like, and this time it was like the first five people I sent it to were like, we want to help, what's up, you know? And, what? and like, that's unusual. So like some, it does feel like something different in the air. I mean, in terms of everybody just being engaged and wanting to help produce things and make things happen. Oh, wow. Um, yeah. Wow. Thank you for saying that. That's awesome. Yeah. But I mean, or maybe I just made a good album. <laughs> like, <laughs> no, no, no. no, that's, no. That, that's yeah. like, you, you see how far I will go to not just tell myself, yeah, maybe you just made something that people like. No, no, no. The whole <laughs> culture is different. It's everything. It can I, be I don't know. It, it might be both. That's, it can called be both. The, that's called the zeitgeist, I believe, Molly. That's when you zeitgeist. You, you thread the needle there, you know. Um, but yeah, I think I've I have yeah. kind of been put I've been making a lot of things and putting a lot of things down. Yeah. But um where was I going with that thought? Yeah, um, so like I yeah, I mean I've I put all that electronic music out. Um in the middle of last year and like I like I said I just like did it all myself and put it on band camp and was like hey maybe if anybody cares here it is um yeah um how do people find that how would they find it is it your name it's int int music int music um and like yeah and then when I started getting really depressed I started doing all of these like covers of like classic punk songs but I was like turning them into these like computer sort of disco songs I don't know if you saw any of that Pete but like some of that turned out pretty good actually <laughs> I hadn't listened in a while and then I busted them out the other day and I was like you and the RC I was just laughing my head off at these you know um turning like you know corrosion of conformity songs into like craft work songs basically you know um but it's kind of interesting too when you do that when you break things down and see like oh all songs are kind of the same song <laughs> it's all like you know there's not that i mean p 
people might have different colored t-shirts on and they have a different level of distortion or they're using a different kind of guitar but it's like a lot of these ideas about what's different about them are pretty like it's just a cultural skin that we're putting on something you know but i'm going that's that that's exactly what uh i was watching this documentary on jean michel basquia last night mm -hmm. and a lot of his paintings were modeled after you know great works of art and they weren't in any way a reproduction but it was it was it was yeah it was he was like but nobody has nobody has seen it this way before like through his mm -hmm. friends right it, that's why people loved it but he was basically taking older ideas riffing off of these ideas that had been around in paintings forever but right. seeing brand new ways and that's always interesting like to yeah. see how like even when like bad example but even when like ryan adams sang um all those uh oh what's your name taylor taylor Swift. Swift. yeah or johnny cash singing nine inch nails and stuff like that yeah 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 it's all like yeah our the things yeah. that we think are different about them aren't they're not that different you know but they it's, are though oh well, yeah yeah um well like i think i think some people like a lot of the people who don't sit around obsessively capturing ideas from the creative wi-fi of the universe would hear like hear pete say oh he's just saving photos to a folder and then kind of using those like they don't think that we're doing that like they think that every idea is just this brand new completely fresh out of the box like no everything is i guess we're all re reinterpreting everything right yeah, oh everything has always yeah. been something being reinterpreted that's what everything is you know it's like um even i mean movies there's how many friggin movies the story is the same over and over and over again right well we, yeah we all have to get into, you have to yeah and i would think probably if people think that's what it is if the press what the process is like i've got to just sit in a white room with sunglasses on and come up with an idea without with my head completely clear of every other cultural touch point that's ever hit me it's like well that's pretty intimidating i'm not going to be able to come up with anything in that in that world you know um, all, we reinterpret it depending on how it has affected us, right? So then you yeah. grew out of that and then other people with similar experiences latch on to it and can relate to it. Right. Yeah. That's when something, hopefully something beautiful happens right there. And there. Yeah. Yeah. Which means inspiration is a familiar thing. Maybe that's why we seek it so much in some mm -hmm. ways, you know? Because you, it's familiar, even right. though it's totally brand new, which makes it absolutely fascinating. To me. But yeah. So I don't know, fellers. I think that's a good place to stop. 